U.S. President Donald Trump's threat to ban TikTok proves at least two things. It shows how America has turned its back on the values that have made it great. It also shows to the world that it doesn't have a monopoly on innovation. Now, it's just an app. Many of the videos are actually quite silly, but watching them made me laugh and uh, forget about the heaviness in our daily lives. For Americans, I guess it gives them a nice break as well when hundreds of their compatriots are dying of a virus and people bickering over a piece of cloth on their face. I've heard creators are making their livelihood on TikTok as well and a special fund is expected to support them further. This is a good thing with uh, such staggering unemployment numbers in the U.S. This is especially true for some talented Americans who have attracted a large audience within a short period of time who haven't had this kind of opportunity if they followed the traditional agent model. With this app, they found a brand new platform of expression and creativity, something no other American application has been able to do. And now President Trump wants to take that opportunity away. TikTok's users might have staged the emptiest stadium in Tulsa, which annoyed President Trump, but that might have spared a few dozen COVID-19 deaths in Oklahoma. President Trump might not have liked how the uh, Black Lives Matter hashtag went viral on TikTok, but that's against the enshrined First Amendment in the Constitution of good old U.S. of A. Remember, they always accuse others of suppressing freedom of expression, right? Now, President Trump says the case against TikTok is based on its connection to China. His trade advisor has openly accused TikTok of stealing personal data and sharing them with the Chinese government, but none of these accusations can be backed up. It's the same person who said China spawned the coronavirus, and President Trump and uh, his Secretary of State Pompeo said they saw evidence the virus came from a lab in Wuhan. They said Huawei could pose security risks. They said this, they said that, just short of showing evidence. So guilty until proven innocent? I thought it's innocent until proven guilty. Never mind. What are tech experts saying? A Washington Post piece examined this very question. Among other things they found, TikTok doesn't take any more of users' data than Facebook. TikTok's app doesn't do any of these shady things to a user's phone more than routine tasks as other similar applications would do, and that uh, there is scant evidence that TikTok is sharing our data with China. A story on the tech magazine Wired asked the same questions, and experts have found that TikTok appears to be in the same league as other social media applications in data collection, even pretty tame compared to other apps, and that people are only guessing what the Chinese government can do if they ever get a hold of private data of Americans. Now, don't judge a person by the color of his or her skin, but the content of his or her character. Now, judge a company not of what it does, but where it comes from? Sounds like an original sin that can't be erased. TikTok has done almost everything possible to become of Americans, by Americans, and for Americans. Its servers in America and Singapore, hiring an American CEO, creating American jobs, paying American taxes, and servicing American consumers, and yet, it seems just not enough. It's now asked to be completely severed from its China origin. The move is like forcing someone to disown his or her parents, change all the blood, and sell oneself to a new family or taking a cut from the proceeds. Whatever happens, it was a Chinese idea. Some American politicians have been jousting China for stealing American IP. Now by arm-twisting TikTok, they have actually acknowledged America doesn't have a monopoly on innovation. China can come up with good ideas too. When one can't compete, one takes. With TikTok having been widely used already, that tyranny and the tyranny over people's laughter and happiness as well could be reciprocated on ballots on November the 3rd. Someone said by threatening to ban TikTok, Trump has just solved the age-old problem of how to motivate young people to come out and vote. I can almost hear these young people scream at the top of their lungs, give me TikTok or give me death called me to see whether or not uh, uh, how I felt about it 
And I said, look, it can't be controlled for security reasons by China. Too big, too uh, invasive, and it can't be. And here's the deal. Uh, I don't mind if, uh, whether it's Microsoft or somebody else, a big company, a secure company, very, very American company, buy it. It's probably easier to buy the whole thing than to buy 30 percent of it. I suggested that uh, he can go ahead. He can try. We set a date. I set a date of around September 15th, at which point it's going to be out of business in the United States. But if somebody, and whether it's uh, Microsoft or somebody else, buys it, that'll be interesting. Maybe a deal is going to be made. It's a great asset. It's a great asset. But it's not a great asset in the United States unless they have the approval of the United States. So it'll close down on September 15th unless Microsoft or somebody else is able to buy it and work out a deal, an appropriate deal, so the Treasury of the — really, the Treasury, I guess you would say, of the United States gets a lot of money, a lot of money.